Hi everyone, it's Ray with the Education Team from Swirly Ladies Kit Club, and today I'm going to share with you how to assemble and also how I've decorated this mini tall boy from Kaiser Craft. This is an MDF off the page, and it's very cute. It's a little bit taller than your hand. It's about seven inches, and it's super sweet. So let's get started. To start out with, I am going to color all of the pieces with Distress Stain, and I'm going to use Gathered Twigs for this. I like to do this on both the inside and the outside. If I'm going to cover it with paper, I just like to do the edges, but sometimes if I'm not paying attention to how I'm going to assemble it, I'll just do the whole thing just to make sure I'm not missing any pieces. And the good thing about Distress Stain is that you can keep going with this, you can go over it, and then if you actually do put paper on here, then that's fine too. It's not going to make any bit of a difference. So you can always go back and add this distress stain if you already have paper like on the edges and stuff. That's totally fine. So some of these pieces have really small areas right there that you can see where the grooves are. And what I like to do is I like to put some of that distress stain either on a craft sheet or I'm just using some old packaging that I've already used for something else. And what I'm going to be doing with that is just take some of the distress stain in there and use a brush. That way I'm getting my entire project covered just to make it look nice and complete. Now that I've covered all the pieces with the Distress Stain that I want covered, I'm going to go ahead and cover the outside of the box with this Kaiser Craft Base Coat paper in the, in the wood grain, and I'm just going to be doing this on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace each one of the pieces with a pencil, or you can do it with a pen if you want, it doesn't make a difference. And then after I have it all measured out with a pencil, I'll go ahead and use a craft knife, or you can use scissors, it's entirely up to you. But you just want to cut it out almost as exactly as possible, and that way when you're filing, you're not filing off a lot of paper and not wasting a lot of it. Once I've cut out my paper to fit the pieces that I want on the outside of the box, I'm going to go ahead and use Zip Dry. I think that's the best glue for these MDF pieces. And I like to squeeze it on. I'm not using a lot, but I'm trying to get it as much on the edge as possible. And as you can see, I'm not going to douse the paper with this, but I'm not going to put too little on there either. So I'll keep doing that and then it will be time to put it on there. And I don't have a brayer. I don't know what happened to my brayer. So what I'm gonna do is make a makeshift brayer and I'm just gonna use one of the extra pieces and I'm going to put it on there like it were a brayer and just kind of smooth it on there, smooth that paper onto the piece. That way it stays on and that will push the glue all the way to the edges too. And once that glue is dry, I'm going to go ahead and use a file to file down the excess pieces of the paper. That way it's nice and smooth. First, I'll use one of these larger ones, and then I'll use a fine tip one. I use the basic gray precision files. So for the next part, I want to assemble the little drawers. And again, I'm going to use Zip Dry. And what I like to do is to figure out which ends meet before I actually put the glue on there, otherwise I'm wasting. And you can see that the front and the back are the places that you need to put the glue, which is good. And you just put little tiny strips, not too much, not too little. And then after you get done doing all four sides, You'll push it together and you need to hold it for a couple of minutes until it dries and it's really worth it to hold it. Now that the box is assembled or the drawer is assembled and dry, I'm going to take some distress stain and I'm going to cover up the parts of the box that I'm not going to cover in paper. And I'm only going to cover the first part of the box. I'm not going to cover the inside and I'm not going to cover the sides. I just don't think it's worth it. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet and I don't want to put anything in the inside of the boxes because if I paint it, it might come off on whatever I'm putting on there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but this will make it complete on the outside. So this is the paper that I've chosen for the front of my box, and I'm going to use this same piece of paper, 
for all three of the drawers and I'm going to cut the top part so you can see that rose on the first drawer and then I'm just going to cut two other pieces just right off of there so it's all going to look like it's one sheet basically it's going to be kind of like a mosaic if that makes sense you'll see in a few minutes and I'm going to put those on my drawers and the other thing that I'm going to do is that you see that there's little, little poles on there I'm not going to use those because we have those cute little poles that came in the kit so I thought I would go ahead and use those instead so I'm going to flip that box around and that part where you see that little dip in there I'm not going to use that at all I'm just that's just going to be the back so these are the front pieces for each of my three drawers so I will glue each one of these pieces on and I'm going to use zip dry again and in addition to that, I will sand off the edges if I need to. I know that I cut these a little bit bigger, which is fine. I like that sanded smooth edge, so I just take my file against that anyway, even though it's pretty close. And then I will take some paper soft after I get done filing that, just to ink the edges to give it a more distressed and nice look. So my next step with the drawers is to go ahead and put those little poles on there and I want to use the wood one and I also want to use the little brass pole. In order to do that I need to make a hole in the middle and so you see I'm using a crocodile so that I can get a nice hole and even though I thought that was even it's not so I'm gonna have to make another hole which is gonna be okay because that wood is going to cover it so it's all right just one of those little things that you do you make a mistake and it's fine so after I do that I want to glue the wood part on there first and I also have made a hole I guess I didn't record myself doing that but I did put a hole on that wood part too and then I put the brass pole through there now you may get some brass poles if you've got this kit that will not fit on there and it's not really that big of a deal although it's awesome to have that cut through there like or to have that on there it's not necessary and you can just glue it I ended up having to do that with one of my drawers and it's okay So before I assemble my box, I want to add some decoration to the back of it. So I thought I would add a mask, and I'm going to use this Prima Gate mask, and it's actually the perfect size for this, because if I just center it just right, just the very bottom is going to get cut off. So I think that that's going to be a really nice decoration, and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to use gesso or not, and then I decided that I didn't want to, and I thought a really good medium to use would be ferro and I think gold goes really well with that so I'm going to use the ferro that's in amber gold so to assemble the box I just start with laying it on its side I add the drawers then I add the back and I'm using zip dry along every little spot that's going to hit another piece and I put that other side on there I hold that together and when the frame is dry, I add that extra little piece and hold that there for a while too. And this is the basic construction of the box. So the back is done. I've added a resin piece and I colored it with Perfect Pearls Mist and also I used the Magical Micas in Sea Green. And so the back is pretty much done. I don't think I'm going to do too much with that except for I also want to add some lace around the top of it. And I'm going to get that lace from my stash. But that's going to be one of the things that I do in just a minute. I wanted to explain a couple of other things that I'm going to do. I'm going to use my little resin frames from Melissa Francis that we got in this kit. And what I'm going to start with is, and I've already done one of them, is I'm going to take some Inca Gold. And I'm just using an old Distress foam over here. So I'm going to start with that. So you can see that it has multiple colors. It's got the white resin and it has the gold and it's got that dark walnut brown on there. And so when I want, I'm going to finish these frames by adding some little details inside and I'm going to use some of the paper from the Curiosity line again. 
just some little snippets. I have some of this color that I used for my drawers right there. And I'm probably going to use this color too. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just going to cut it out exactly. What I'll most likely do is set these down on the piece of paper after I've glued this bottom, and then I can just cut around it because it's going to be sitting freestanding on here. And I've got three of them that I'm going to do that with. And my hope is, is that I can just glue them right there on the top and have them sit there. And so on the back, I don't want to have my shape of my paper that I'm cutting out. To look nasty back there so I'm just gonna cut it so if I glue it on here first I mean then I'll just have a nice edge like that and it will look okay so that's what I'll be doing I'm not gonna do a lot of this on camera because it's not something that you need to see I don't think it's basically gonna be a lot of assembling and I don't want to waste your time so that's what's going to go on the top. In addition, we did get some Kaiser Craft roses, and I've decided that I wanted to put these up here. There we go. Sorry, that was out of camera, out of range. And I've also used some of the white cardstock from the cardstock add on, and I have cut it with a quick cottage cuts die of ivy. And then again, I use that Perfect Pearls Mist and Mint and Mint. Perfect Pearls Mist in Mint. Wow, that's a mouthful. And then I went over it with the Paper Soft in Moss Green. And I'm going to stick those right here. I'm going to need to fiddle around with this a little bit, so I will spare you putting that on camera and making you watch it. I'm going to add something else from my stash, and it is a Melissa Francis little bell jar. And that's going to go like that. Let me see if I can move that into the camera range. Like that. So I'll add that with my little frames. I'm going to probably put a saying in there. I have one of the Bow Bunny Brads that I'm going to put in there. And I think that will look pretty cute sitting around like that. In addition, I have some lace from my stash that I really wanted to use. And so I have this, and I'm going to put it around, and you'll see this in the end picture. That's going to go like this. And then I thought I would add some of the Kaiser Craft rhinestones around like that, around the lace. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to decorate my sides of my dresser. And what I did was I've done, already done a lot of fussy cutting. And I'm going to take another piece of paper from the Curiosity line. And I've got it like this just to give it some added interest. And it's basically going to go like that. And I've cut out some big roses from that same sheet of paper. I think it was the Extraordinary. And so... It's going to look like that. I'm sorry, I'm not doing my video in my normal spot, so I'm kind of out of touch with how it's supposed to go. So that's going to go like that. And then I'm going to add some dimension by adding some more of the fabulous red roses from Kaiser Craft. And I'm going to put them like that. And then I'm going to add some more of the ivy. And that's pretty much it. And then it will be done.